Hello and welcome to week seven. Now this is not a lecture, uh, it's more a uh, description of your final assignments, assignment 7A and 7B. So the first assignment, assignment 7A, this assignment is worth 5%. And basically what you're going to be asked to do is create your own quiz question. So you'll be given an assignment 7A link on Moodle. You click into that and you can see the instructions here you'll be asked to create a multiple choice que question so you can look at some of the formats we've used in um, the five multiple choice quizzes uh, again the questions should um, try and make them interesting make them challenging make them fair uh, so you'll be asked to do four things you'll be asked to set the question test text uh, add four possible answers so these three of these will be called distractors in multiple choice. So they shouldn't be completely wrong um, because remember we said the multiple choice quiz is uh, to choose the most correct answer. You then indicate which is the actual correct answer in your question <clears throat> and then identify which weaker topic. So is it lecture one, two, three, four, five or six that your question refers to? Uh, you're only allowed to do this once and then once you do that you'll be able to see other participants questions and then comment on them and rate them so if you want to give it a very high rating say like a four or five excellent then the highest rating ones we'll uh, plan to include them on future six sigma courses if you th think the question is trivial or too easy or not well written and so on maybe you give it want to give it a uh, two or a three two is a pass out of five um, <clears throat> and if you think it's terrible give it a one Now, Simon 7B is more challenging. Uh, this assignment is worth 20%, and there'll be a uh, the PDF file of the uh, lecture notes uh, from Moodle. So you challenge then is to generate the error proofing solutions for three problems shown in the slides. So your I'll show you some examples here now, but the description of the problem, drawings and images to explain it. Now you have to use a PowerPoint file for this assignment. And again, each of your three solutions will be marked on a scale of 1% to 5%. So when you're marking, um, you'll be marking other solutions as well. So mark on the quality of the presentation of the solution, how effective it is. So is it 100% effective or is it not effective at all? And again, I'll give you some examples of this. Simplicity and innovation come together. So simplicity is the greatest form of innovation, as we said. And then cost. If it's a very high cost, complex solution, then it would rate lower. You'll then be asked to mark three additional solutions from your fellow students. And the mark you give them will will also be rated against the average mark given to them. So I have some explanation on Moodle on this. We're using the Moodle workshop module. So there's additional resources that explain how that works. But basically, if you rate the students, say, a one out of five, and uh, your peers rate them a five out of five, and the average mark is four out of five, well, then you'll get a lower marking score for that. So you can see then the three assignments plus the peer marking uh, add up to 20%. Uh, you upload that file to Moodle and there is a 10 megabyte um, maximum file upload so don't use huge uh, images. And uh, you know because it's been peer marked you shouldn't put your name on the PowerPoint file or any of the slides. So we'll know that it's from you because it'll be uploaded from your Moodle account. So here's an example of a sample uh, problem you'd be given. So the operator, um, you can see here, adds a washer and a nut and then tightens using this automatic nut driver. So they tighten it there clockwise. But sometimes the washer is missing. So the nut is tightened right down onto here, but there's no washer. And that uh, involves expensive rework. So your challenge then will be to put in an error proofing solution and any relevant drawings images here. So I'll show you, show you some uh, sample solutions for that. So one of them is uh, that you would put in a stopper onto the nut driver and it would mean then that the um, washer could only be tightened as far as what the this distance or this gap is here to allow for the washer thickness. So if the washer was missing it would be uh, obvious to the inspector. Now the only thing is this isn't 100% effective. It is definitely low cost, so just for this stopper. It is simple, um, but it is still possible for the operator just to uh, put this on and uh, let the 
let the part go through with the, with the washer missing. So that would be the, what we would call the reference solution, when we give you a reference solution to mark the other ones. So I'll show you in this case here, if you were to mark that then the reference solution uh, will be kind of your benchmark. So if someone produces something that's equivalent to the reference solution, we will give them 4 out of 5. Uh, they would use high quality images graphics, they would use a good explanation. Uh, if they just put in some text, they had no images, uh, something which was just was poor, you would give it a 1 out of 5. If it met the pass mark, uh, maybe there was a lack of detail or the images were poor, not as effective as the rest reference solution, more complex, more expensive, you would give it a 2 out of 5. Uh, 3 out of 5, it would be good, equivalent in effectiveness, but maybe marginally more expensive or complex than the reference solution. And if you thought it was better than the reference solution, you would give it a 5 out of 5. five, out of five. So very innovative. Solution exceeds reference solution, effectiveness, simplicity and cost high quality graphics and images used to explain the proposed solution. So if we take that earlier example that we looked at. This is another uh, solution that a student sent in. So the student said, well, what we'll do is we'll move towards uh, these kept nuts or flange nuts and they have a built in washer. So you can see straight away that the effectiveness of this solution is pretty much 100% because you can't put on the washer assuming that there isn't additional nuts there without washers, but assuming there's only these types of nuts and washers at the station. Now, they didn't put in a um, <clears throat> cost difference for these versus uh, ones with washers separately, but it's, it's, it's not deemed to be significant. So in this case, this definitely merits a 4 and possibly a 5 out of 5. Definitely, I think, for the higher effectiveness, that's one area where the weighting would be slightly higher. Well, let's look at another example. So the driver parks the car in the gar garage. Uh, sometimes they pull in, they hit the cabinet in the front. If they don't pull in far enough, then the, the garage door will hit the back of the car. So the driver's trying to come up with a simple, low cost, effective solution for this. This solution put in a, uh, or this student put in a solution around uh, just hanging a tennis ball. So get the car into the correct place in the garage, hang a tennis ball off the ceiling, and when you touch the um, tennis ball, then you know you should stop. So that's definitely simple, low cost and effective, although not 100% effective. But what this student did here was they also suggested that maybe you should put some kind of little bollard on the garage floor. And that would be 100% effective because the car couldn't go forward over that. Again, disadvantage of that might be that it, it would uh, impact the use of the garage at other times. But I think both combined there again would be uh, considered, um, you know, at least a four or five for those solutions. Simple, low cost and effective. So here's your three problems. Problem one, <clears throat> uh, there's an operator putting in a barcode here. And uh, the barcode uh, is just a series of barcode lines. There's no text on it or anything. So the operator uh, can put the barcode in um, upside down and then it has to be removed and replaced. So you need to put your solution in here. Uh, you can put it on a separate slide as well. That's fine. Uh, here's the second one. Uh, this manufacturing process is producing these pins. They're coming down a uh, conveyor line and uh, the operator has to check that the uh, pins are too large or too small. So sometimes pins of the incorrect diameter get delivered to the customer. As they're coming down this uh, conveyor line, can you error proof the process that not only the right size pins are delivered to the customer? So the customer wants five centimeter pins, but they'll take uh, ones with slight tolerance. And then finally, uh, Simon 7B error proofing the uh, tins, paint tins, are coming down this production line. And basically, there is a filling process down here. So as the uh, paint tins come down, it's important that the, uh, they're not upside down. They don't come off this uh, press upside down. So the operator inspects these and takes the pins. There's the uh, <clears throat> kind of the cutaway view of the paint tin upside down. So if this is let go through, then obviously the filling process puts paint everywhere. So can you design a solution for that and put any relevant drawings or images in there? OK, that's it. Week 7 error proofing assignment. That's an explanation of assignment 7A and 7B.